So, um, yeah, let's get started, absolutely. Um, I'll, I'll pass over to you in a second. So, first of all, um, a very warm welcome to everybody who's joined us on this webinar tonight. Um, a very good mix of um, participants here. Um, as Fabrizio already mentioned, lots of different nationalities. Um, and actually, um, it's, a, it's a pleasure today to welcome Tom Smith from the USA. So, we've never had a speaker from so far away, so it's a pleasure to have Tom with us. Um, a very quick word um, uh, about myself. My name is Ben, in case you haven't um, sort of seen me on some of the other webinars before. I'm the uh, coordinator of the European Schoolnet Academy, and um, I'll be hosting this webinar tonight. Um, that means um, while Tom will be presenting all the key sort of elements on the webinar, uh, I'll be responding to you in the chat, and I'll be relaying questions that you have for Tom to him after he has finished his presentation. So the way the webinar will work is you will stay muted throughout the webinar. Um, Tom will give a, pr a presentation of about sort of half an hour, um, and you will have the opportunity to ask questions during that um, presentation already. I will collect those questions and will relay those questions to Tom after he has finished his presentation. So that at the end of the presentation, we're going to have a um, sort of 15 to 20 minutes Q&A session, depending on how many questions there are. But as I said, it's perfectly fine to already ask questions throughout the presentation. And if Tom likes, um, he can already answer them during the presentation. But um, we will try to keep most of the questions um, for the end of the presentation. Now, if you have a question, um, make sure you write that into the chat and make sure to post that question to all participants. Um, you have the option to also send a message just to the panelists, um, but please always post a question um, and preferably also comments um, it, to all so that everybody can see them. Those are the main elements of how the webinar will work. Um, we will record the webinar, so if you have to leave a bit early or if you'd like to recap something that we covered on the webinar, then um, you will find a recording of this webinar fairly soon afterwards in section 4.5 of the actual course, like we did on the previous webinars. Um, now, there are a couple of people I can see who haven't joined the audio, con audio, con audio conference. That means um, you won't be able to hear what I'm saying. Um, I'll be posting in the chat the instructions to join the audio conference in a, in a second again. But if um, those of you who can hear me already want to help your colleagues, um, please do that already via the chat, um, explaining to them how they can join the audio conference. Um, well, that's it for the webinar. So let me now quickly introduce you to our speaker tonight. Um, Tom Smith is from the US, and he um, is an experienced teacher, has experience of teaching chemistry and physics, um, and he also started an, an engineering class at the school he was working at. Um, he now works for Vernier Technology, and Vernier is actually a partner in our, um, in our Future Classroom Lab, in European Schoolnet's Future Classroom Lab. And Vernier specializes um, on uh, sensor technology for the educational environment. Um, and Tom will today talk about this very interesting topic of bringing microcontrollers, and in particular the Arduino, um, which we already looked at on the course, um, together with that sensor technology. What, you can, what can you do with those two things together that uh, is engaging in the classroom? And I'm really looking forward to this because um, Tom will actually show us um, with a second webcam a sort of a live experiment as far as I understand. So I'm sure this will be uh, very interesting. And um, yeah, and I think that's, uh, that's all the key messages uh, for the introduction. Um, Tom, so can I hand over to you now? Yeah, thanks, Ben. I uh, appreciate the introduction. Uh, it's, it's actually quite a privilege to be addressing the European Union today. I, this is the first time I've done something like this uh, on an international scale as well. Um, sh I should be able to get over here to the presentation. And do I have control of this now? Is that, uh, you have full control. Yeah, you are the presenter, Excellent. so we can now see your actual slides. Okay, so here's our presentation. Uh, demystifying sensor data collection through computing. And the idea of this is uh, that we can take our sensors that we uh, create and we can pair them up with a microcontroller, an Arduino, 
to actually uh, collect data and potentially control something in the environment, whether it's turning on a buzzer or controlling a motor or something like that. Uh, obviously, the goals around uh, this are to increase digital literacy, and uh, it's a great platform for teaching coding. Uh, as, uh, as Ben mentioned, uh, I had nine years in the classroom of teaching physics primarily and started an engineering course. Uh, one of the things that I've really enjoyed since I joined Vernier is uh, their focus on, or our focus on making our, uh, our sensor technology accessible to everybody. So it's not just a black box that the students use to collect data, but uh, they also have the opportunity to kind of dig underneath the black box and find out what makes it tick. That's a bit what we're going to do today. Uh, I should mention before we get too far along that there are a couple other people from Vernier uh, on the webinar. Uh, Gerard Ezkura from, from Florida is the Managing Director of Vernier International, and Vince English is the uh, CEO of Vernier Europe Limited in Ireland. Uh, so there may be questions that would be appropriate for them to address uh, later on as well. At least I, I believe they're on the webinar. Um, so, Vernier uh, sensing technology uh, kind of fits into this general category. We have our sensors. This is a picture of our uh, uh, dual range force sensor that we're going to be using today. We plug that sensor into an interface, which takes the signal, translates it a bit, and feeds it to a program running on our computer. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different in that we're going to use the same sensors, but instead of plugging it into a, a, an interface into a computer, we're going to uh, plug it into an Arduino and, uh, and collect the data directly from the sensor through the Arduino, and then manipulate that data so we can understand a, a little bit more how the sensor works and how we actually get a reading of so many newtons of force, for example, uh, from a force sensor. Uh, I guess at this time I'd be, ask Ben to post the first two polling questions just to learn a little bit about who you are and what your experience is with uh, sensing technology and, uh, and Arduino. Absolutely. Thanks a lot for that cue, Tom. So I'm just going to take over the presenter rights and I'll start that poll. So for everybody who's on the webinar, you will now um, receive two poll questions. You should see that uh, on the right-hand side of your webinar window, um, and you can respond to each of those. If you are on a tablet or on a smartphone, unfortunately, it won't be possible for you to respond to this poll. What you can do, though, however, however is to just write um, the answer into the chat. Um, so the question is, uh, how often you use electronic probes and sensors in your classroom? Um, and the second question is, rate your experience with Arduino. And the answers are coming in now. So we have um, around sort of 25 people who have already responded. Still waiting for some more answers. So I'll leave open this these poll questions for a few more. Or maybe half a half a minute. I have about twenty people who haven't responded yet. Once everybody has responded, uh, I'll be sharing the results with you and Tom, and you can then go ahead and directly discuss those. So, still seventeen people who haven't responded yet, and we're getting some um, uh, getting. I uh, know we're getting a few answers here into the chat as well from people who might be on a tablet or a smartphone. Okay, so um, let's say another 20 seconds and then I'll close the poll. There's around, still around sort of 12 people who haven't answered the questions.
Okay, I'll uh, close the poll now. And there's still some answers coming in. So final 10 seconds. And a couple more ads coming in via the chat as well. So now to share the results, you should now see the results of the poll on the right hand side of your webinar window. Tom, can you see them? Yes, I can. Thanks. So this is great. Uh, it looks like uh, we're exposing a lot of people who have, uh, have not been using sensors at, or, uh, oops, the results just uh, refreshed, I guess, is what they did. So, uh, looks like uh, I'm just going to take a look at these a little bit more. We have about two thirds of you uh, rarely or never use sensors, and uh, roughly two thirds of you. Uh, either don't know what an Arduino is or have never used one at any rate. So that's great. That's, this will be good exposure for you. Uh, I hope that uh, I can keep this in terms that will be useful to you as we move forward. That's great. Okay, I'll talk a little bit about our, uh, our sensors. Um, so maybe uh, I'm going to share my uh, uh, share my desktop with you briefly and just take you on a <clears throat> a tour of a couple of websites that I want that I'll leave with you later on. Uh, the first one is our website. Um, this is Vernier uh, since, uh, Software and Technologies homepage. Um, or since we're dealing with Arduino, uh, I want to show you kind of where you can find the Arduino material. I clicked on subjects went down to engineering and programming and robotics. And you can see we have some connections with uh, National Instruments Lab View and Lego and Arduino. And here on our pages, we have uh, a lot of uh, sample programs and a lot of uh, information about how you use our sensors with Arduino. This is all just free downloads uh, for you to access. Also on our pages, you can find a lot of information about the different uh, products that we manufacture. And in particular, I wanted to show you all of our sensors and probes you can access here. Today, we're going to be looking at the dual range force sensor. And in particular, I just want to point out that you can get to a, a user manual for all of our sensors, just a PDF on the website. And uh, there's information here that we're going to come back to later on, uh, the slope and the intercept of the particular uh, sensor that we're looking at. The other website I want to show you is Arduino's website. They have a lot of information on this. So there's, uh, the software is free. Uh, you go to the download page, and depending on your operating system, you just download the, uh, the software. The, the learning tools are tremendous. They have great tutorials, and they have a reference page that I use uh, every time I, I program an Arduino. I come here to remind myself, how do I do this? So Tom, it's a great resource. Yes. Sorry, just quickly to interject there, um, given that there were quite a few people who had never heard of Arduino even, um, which means actually that uh, they haven't followed the final module set, uh, as of yet. Um, <laughs> maybe it would be good to just quickly um, it actually explain what Arduino is. Yeah, absolutely. Here, let me, I'll go back to, uh, um, well, let me continue to share my desktop and I'll show you, uh, I can get there. Oh. Actually, I'm going to instead, I'm going to go back here and just change the view of my webcam. So 
So I can show you there. You should see, uh, can you see that now, the picture yes. of the Arduino? We can see the Arduino, absolutely. So the Arduino is a microcontroller. It's just a simple electronic uh, device that um, has uh, places for you to get data in and data out, signals in and signals out. It has a, a USB cord that connects directly with the board to the computer, uh, external power supply, uh, but basically it's a small, simple computing device. The Arduino uh, is really good at doing like one program over and over again. That's its strength. If you want something uh, with more computing capability, you're probably going to go to a Raspberry Pi, which is like a mini computer, uh, uh, rather than just a simple, uh, uh, this is the mule, if you will, the workhorse of the microcontrollers. As long as I'm here, I'll just show you that this is a what we call a shield, and it simply mounts right on top of the Arduino and gives you access. It's like pre-wired circuit board to do a specific project. So we use it to connect our sensors with the Arduino. There are other ways to do that, but that's uh, the way that I'll be doing it today. See if I can get this back together now that I've taken it apart. Looks good. Yeah. So that's uh, that's an Arduino. What the Arduino looks like, and uh, that this setup here. So here's the force sensor that I've been talking about. Um, it connects to my shield. My shield is mounted on the Arduino microcontroller and then that's connected to my computer so that I can program it from there. Okay, so let me go back to the presentation. Um, with our sensors, we, we have a six pin connection. So if you're looking at the webcam again, that's the connector for most of our sensors. Um, it has six pins. We use typically four or five of them, depending on the sensor. For working with Arduino, we only need to be concerned about three of those pins. We need a power supply, we need a ground, as with any electrical circuit, and then we use another, another line or pin to get the sensor output. And that sensor, sensor output is going to be somewhere between zero and five volts, depending on the type of sensor and how it's working. So with those three electrical connections, we can provide power to the sensor and get a signal back from it. One of the, uh, so the majority of our sensors are these analog sensors as opposed to a digital sensor. A digital sensor would basically tell you I'm on or I'm off. An analog sensor gives us that range of zero to five volts and somewhere along that spectrum is where your signal is gonna come out. The, the beauty of the majority of our sensors is that they are also linear in that relationship. So you can imagine if you're able to collect two data points, you have a voltage for uh, zero newtons and a voltage for uh, maybe five newtons. You can create a line and you know you can, you can interpolate or extrapolate to figure out uh, what the response is at any given force. So you can, you can translate that voltage that you get from your, um, your sensor into an actual sensor value just by using a, an equation of a line. This is actually becomes a really powerful tool for teaching mathematics as well as the science behind the sensors in that the students are going to be able to uh, appreciate uh, a real application of their algebra course where they've created a line, they're taking that line, creating some code to translate that into a sensor value that they can then read. And that's basically what we're going to do today. So uh, this picture just kind of shows a picture of an Arduino sketch. The sketch is what they call their programs. Why they call it a sketch, 
I really don't know. Maybe one of you out there has some background on that, but uh, it's a mystery to me. And uh, a picture of the, uh, the Arduino board. This happens to be manufactured by SparkFun. I'll refer to it as an Arduino. It's equivalent to the Arduino Uno, or I think it's Genuino on, in the European side. And uh, so it's, I'll just continue to refer to it as Arduino to avoid any confusion. It's the same basic board. The nice thing about the Arduino community is that it's all open source, so they just share, this is how we build our boards, this is what our program is, so that everybody can access it. Uh, it's a very low cost of entry for this activity. Okay, there's a couple things with uh, Arduino coding that are worth noting, and I think, I, yeah, let me do this. Well, let me go forward a little bit, and then we'll go back to the sketches a little bit. So, with as I mentioned before, with the with our sensors, we need to connect a a power supply. So this is a five volt power supply coming into this connector here. Um, we have a ground line that connects to our ground line, and then we have a a signal line. That's the signal from the sensor that's going to connect with uh, the Arduino in the analog in port. So we've just chosen A0, our first analog in port, to make that connection. What that looks like in real life, this is a, a physical connector that we just uh, we sell as part of our uh, projects, programs here. You can see a picture of it here attached to a breadboard, which is just a, an aid for wiring, that you would then take a wire, connect it, and connect it to the right place on the Arduino. So uh, if you look at the video, the, the, uh, yeah, the video feed, this is that picture of that uh, connector. Our sensor plugs in here, and the wiring happens on the other side to connect to the Arduino. The other way we can make that connection is with this shield, which basically does the wiring for us. So a shield uh, is simply uh, another circuit board that is pre-wired that uh, is designed for a specific function. So we have a shield that we've manufactured that allows us to plug our sensors in and it connects our sensors to the right pins on the Arduino without us having to do much more than know where they go so that we can program it appropriately. And, it just, it, and it's kind of a matter of, of uh, choice when you get into this as to whether you want to emphasize programming or you want to emphasize kind of the hardware end of it, uh, in which case, uh, if you want to emphasize, you know, to your students uh, to make sure they understand where they're plugging things in and how things connect, then you may want to go back and use this type of a connector and have them use a breadboard with the wires. But if you're more interested in them just learning coding as an entry point for, uh, for computing, then uh, a shield may be the way to go. It may be just a simpler way to proceed. So uh, this is when I thought I could ask you this question. This may be premature for you guys if you don't have a sense as to how you're going to how you would do this. But um, I guess I would appreciate knowing if you think that you would be more interested in the hardware side of it, the software side of it, or uh, both or really don't know at this point. So if we can post that next uh, polling question. Okay, thanks for that, Tom. Um, let me start the second poll. There we go. So you should now be seeing the third question. What is the focus of your approach to computing? Hardware, software, both? You're not sure or uh, yeah, no, that's it. I'm not sure. So answers are coming in. We'll let this run for maybe two minutes or so. 
So, Tom, just in the meantime, um, a couple of questions already coming in here um, in the chat. Um, and one of them was about um, sort of scenarios of using um, the sensors, and I guess maybe the Arduino as well, in, in language classes. Is that a scenario that you have come across, or is that something that you think is not appropriate, or where it doesn't at least work very well? Or have you, do you know of anything similar like this? Well, I'm not coming up with an example off the top of my head, but um, there's, um, yeah, let me think about that a little bit and see if I can come up with an idea or two before the, yeah. the end of the oh. session. Okay, sounds good. Um, yeah, yeah. Now let's let's pick it up again at the end of the session. Um, just thought I'd mention that already. So we still have a few answers missing. Um, looks like most. Well, at least sort of a third of people focus on software and about a quarter on both. We only have one person responding so far on hardware. So, okay. So let's um, give this another half a minute. So and that's that's great. That may be the right uh, the entry point, and then you may find that as you and your students get into it, that there's an interest in diving down to that next layer to kind of sense uh, what is going on. How do you make those physical connections? Uh, now that you're comfortable with kind of programming the Arduino to begin with, so that's good. Yeah. So um, okay, I'm just closing the poll now and. We'll share the results, and the picture hasn't changed substantially from what I mentioned yeah. earlier. Can you see the results now? I can, yeah. So if you uh, undecided out there, uh, but uh, either uh, both or a software emphasis seems to be the key, and that's appropriate for a group of people interested in computing, so that's great. Um, okay. Great. So um, I'll pass over the presenter privileges back to you now. Okay. So uh, I showed you, and you see on the webcam as well, the the setup of our system. Again, dual range four sensor here connected to our our shield, which is connected to the Arduino, which is connected to my computer, and my computer is where I have the code that we're going to. Um, develop and uh, so I want to spend a little bit of time just talking about the Arduino code or the sketches. Um, in this picture, uh, and I'm going to go to actual an actual sketch here in a second, but uh, you see uh, uh, the sketch right here and then behind it you see these numbers back here. This is a serial monitor. And the serial monitor is basically the, uh, the, the output from your program. You have to tell it what you want to see in the digital monitor, in the serial monitor, but uh, you can print out uh, sensor readings or any number of different things here. In this example, I have time and a count, just a number. So at this point, I'm going to uh, go back and share my desktop to just emphasize a few things about the sketches. This is the first sketch that we're going to be looking at. It has, you'll notice that I, I start, there's this kind of grayed out area here. Um, there's some, you know, just note these symbols here and these symbols here allow you to make comments about your program that the program is going to ignore. So I can remind myself when I open this up that, oh, I need to connect my sensor to pin A0, and it just gives a general description about what the sketch is going to do. Um, when you get these color-coded parts here, these are actually parts of the program itself or the sketch. Every sketch has two parts, at least two parts to it. There's a setup part, and in this setup part, the only thing I'm doing is I'm setting, I'm starting the program, and I'm uh, setting up uh, something for my serial print, which is just the headers that are going to be printed out at the beginning of the, the serial printer. 
And then, so you have the setup that is done once, and then you have the loop, which is done continuously uh, for as long as the program is running. So you can see, first of all, the, the program is not very big. I mean, this is all the code there is. It's not complex. The, this particular sketch is just designed to read the value from the sensor. It's not going to interpret it. It's just going to read it and print it out. So um, up front, we've also identified some variables. So I've established an integer called reading number and another one called time between readings and a count. Um, the count is a, is a more complex number, so it gets, it's a float, as in floating point. Um, the, again, I've talked about the setup already. And in the loop itself, we print the time. We've calculated a time based on some simple calculation here. And then we go and we read pin A0, and we set that equal to count. And then we simply print that value in our serial printer. Um, we pause for a certain amount of time, and we go back and do it again. So in order to see that, we want to look at the serial monitor. So I guess uh, I know the first thing you would have to do is you'd have to verify that the sketch was created correctly. That's what that check button is for. This, up, this both verifies the, the code as well as uploads it to my board, to my Arduino. So you can see down here is a progress, board, a pro progress uh, bar. It says it's compiling the sketch. Now it's uploading. And in a minute, it will say done uploading. So that's a good sign. That means that everything worked on my system. Just to quickly interject there, um, there are a couple of uh, people who are commenting on the chat that um, they're, they're a bit lost. Um, could you maybe just uh, sort of take sort of one or two steps back and just quickly outline the general process of what you're doing? I mean, I think um, it will take some people time to actually understand this code. And for anybody who's listening here and who's mentioned that they were a bit lost, I don't think the point of this is now for you to actually understand this code. Um, it's more about the process of how you can use the Arduino together with the sensors. Uh, and Tom is just giving a, a specific example here. But Tom, maybe if you if you if you could just quickly take a quick step back and just sort of explain. Yeah, thanks for that, Ben. Um, it, yeah, definitely. My intent was not to make you experts at coding. And in fact, in the Arduino community, uh, the typical. Uh, uh, process is that you find a sketch that's already created that does something close to what you want to do, and then you take that as a starting point and you modify it to make it do what you want to do. It's a real open community. There's a big sense of not recreating what's already been created once, but you can learn quite a bit about the code and about creating a sketch in Arduino by looking at what other people have done. The main point that I wanted to make with, with showing you this sketch is that there are two parts to the sketch. There's the setup part that is done once that just kind of sets things up for you. And then there's the loop, which is done continuously as long as you run the program. Um, and on, uh, on Arduino's website and on our website, you can access uh, an amazing variety of activities ready-made that you can download for yourself. You can just run those sketches directly. Or one of the best teaching methods I've seen is to give a student a working sketch and actually have them change something about it. Maybe they are causing an, uh, uh, an LED to turn on and off, and they simply increase the rate of that blinking or something like that. Hopefully that gives you some context for what I'm trying to. Uh, yeah, and I think the, the the point you made about that these examples can are shared in the community, and you don't necessarily need to be an expert in writing this code yourself. But you've got sort of these set sort of piece of code that can then be applied. I think that would be very useful for many people. Absolutely. 
So let me go back to the presentation and see where we are here, just to keep on track a little bit. So, uh, so with the sketch that I just created, um, I it simply is reading values. Um, and let me uh, allow me to go back to that and uh, share that sketch one more time because I want to. I want to show the serial monitor to show you what it's doing right now. So you'll notice that it's reading out the time, which I, I wanted it to do. And it's also reading a number here over on the side. If I pull down on my force sensor, that number changes. If I push up on it, it changes as well. Um, you might notice that it is not a number between 0 and 5. It's actually uh, a number between 0 and 1,023. That is the, the values that the Arduino will feed back, uh, which is uh, maybe a little bit confusing, but I'll... Uh, so the first thing we need to do is to convert that count from the Arduino into a value from between zero and five uh, for our voltage. It's a linear proportionality, uh, so it's a fairly simple thing to do. So I'm gonna close this sketch, and I'm gonna open up a second one that I've created that is actually going to read the value of the sensor. You might recall I pointed to a user manual that had the slope and intercept of our sensors uh, on it when I went to our website. I've simply put those values into our sketch. I've defined those values. And here in the sketch, in the loop, I take the reading that I have already showed you. It's the same program that I started with. And I've just included a line in it that allows me to calculate the raw voltage from that count. So because it's a portionality, uh, I take the count and divide it by 1,023. That's a, a number that will show up periodically as you're working with Arduino. And I multiply it by 5. So it takes a, a range of 0 to 1,023 we need to scale that down to a range between 0 and 5 to get the voltage that we're getting back from the sensor. And then I'm going to take that voltage and I'm going to apply the intercept, well, the intercept and slope of the calibration of the sensor. So I have two calculations here to convert what's coming out from the sensor to the Arduino into an actual sensor reading. And uh, otherwise, this program is exactly the same as what I've done before. So we'll just uh, go ahead and upload that to my Arduino. Tom, just quickly to ask while this is uploading, um, I mean, what sort of the level of, um, what kind of age range of students have you done this with? Um, because again, there are a couple of people who are saying that this is um, fairly complicated um, and would be challenging probably for um, their students. Do you, do you have you done this with younger students? Is this kind of work possible, or is this only for really the sort of higher levels of high school? So high school definitely. Uh, this is and and it's you know it's going to appeal more to a certain type of student that's interested in technology. Um, uh, I've certainly introduced it to uh, kind of my general physics students uh, as a just a little bit of insight for them as they move forward in their education. Um, I, my experience with middle school is that uh, we've used it as a club activity, but at the middle school it's very much uh, about giving them a project where they're not having to do a lot of the coding up front. They might just have to be changing a little bit about a, a sketch in order to make it work the way they want to. So it's much more the, the 
borrow from somebody else's experience and uh, make it happen, make it their own. Okay, and, and just quickly to follow on from that, um, it, do you know of anything that is very similar to this, um, what, what, you, what we can currently see here, this code effectively? Is there sort of a visual programming tool or language that yes. wants to do this, or yep. what you're sharing there right now? Yeah, there actually is something called uh, Arduino Sketch. I think that's what it's called, or Ardu Arduino Sketch or something like that. I can research that for you and get that information to you. But it's basically a layer on top of this program that allows you to use the, the visual kind of drag and drop programming that they may be familiar with from Scratch or Snap or one of those uh, platforms. So uh, definitely, uh, uh, the, and the beauty of that is that you would still have the ability to uh, use the Arduino as your platform and just program with the, uh, the simpler programming language, yes. Okay, that sounds great. Um, that, that would be fantastic to sort of get the details of that and then we can share that with the participants yeah. afterwards. I'm just make a note here so I don't forget that. Okay, um, so I want to show you the serial monitor of this program running. So just modified the output a little bit so that we see, I'll turn off the auto scroll for a moment. We see time and force now. We've converted that uh, signal of uh, uh, somewhat uh, arbitrary numbers to something closer to an actual force. If I turn on the auto scale and I give a tug on it, you can see a number that's much more in the realm of a reasonable number. And if I push up on it, we get a negative uh, value for the, uh, the force being applied to the sensor. So that's, that's kind of uh, our sensors, how we can get information to the Arduino and convert that into an actual reading of the sensor value. And you're right, it's a, uh, this is probably not an activity that uh, you're gonna uh, start off with without having a little bit of uh, uh, experience with Arduino. Uh, but if you do have some experience with Arduino or, or take some time to, to do some programming with Arduino, this is a great extension for uh, looking at how to connect uh, sensors that they may be using in the classroom to uh, programming language and computing. Um, the, so let me go back to the presentations briefly. And so here's what I did in order to convert the count that I received from the Arduino to the sensor reading. So the Arduino measures the voltage but interprets it as a number between zero and 1,023. Um, you can just accept that as fact for now. Uh, it may be something you want to dive into later on. So we want to capture that count, so we use programming language from, uh, from Arduino, and we read the pin value A0. We convert that then to a voltage by taking that count, dividing it by 1,023, and so there's a fraction of that value, multiplying it by five in order to get the voltage that is being sent by the sensor. And then in order to convert that voltage to a sensor reading, we take that voltage, multiply it by the slope, and add the intercept. So they, they get some practice with proportions, and they get some practice with uh, uh, algebra and linear relationships. So once they have that information, the real beauty of the Arduino is that now you can do something with it. You can take that information and the Arduino will let you control something in your world about it. So if we look at the, the Arduino board again, we have our sensor, you know, we used our five volt power supply and our ground, 
to provide energy or power to our sensor. We get the reading back from the sensor on this analog A0 line. And then we have all these pins over the connections over here, along with another ground that we can use for output devices. These can be used for input as well, but in our example today, I'm just going to use them as an output, meaning I'm going to turn something on or off based on what my sensor is telling me to do. Today, we're going to focus on pin 13, uh, just for the sake of uh, an example that's uh, kind of achievable in the amount of time that we have, is to, uh, there's, in addition to being able to control, say, a motor or a fan or something that you would connect to pin 13 in the ground, it also has an LED attached to it. And that LED, we have a, an extension of that on top of our uh, Arduino board that I'm going to turn on based on the sensor reading. So we're going to basically include some additional information. I have to tell it that I'm using uh, pin 13, and I name pin 13 my LED pin. And I do that up front in my program. Uh, in the program itself, I set the pin as an output device. That's my LED pin. And then I set it low. It's either going to be high or low because it's a digital output. It's either going to be on or off. In my program, in, I create an if-then statement saying that if the sensor reading is over 0.8 newtons, then I'm going to turn the LED on. And I'll be glad to provide these sketches uh, to you afterwards as well, then, if that's helpful. Um, so I just want to demonstrate this uh, now. So we'll go back to uh, my desktop. I'll, uh, I'll turn off this uh, sketch that we've had open and uh, open up the alarm. So this, again, is going to turn on the LED when the sensor reads a particular, it exceeds a particular value. I have a cup, well, I'll let it compile first, and again, we can see our progress here, and then it will upload, and then I'll be able to look at the serial monitor. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I'm looking at, just make sure you can see that there. Um, if I turn on my serial monitor, we start getting our readings of force values. I'm going to attach my cup onto that. And you can see the cup itself has a weight of 0.2 newtons. If I add a weight, it goes up to 0.3 or 0.4. There it is at 0.5, 0.6. And we, we're right at the edge there of 0.8. And once we go over 0.8, we see the LED comes on and stays on. Can you see that there, Ben? Uh, yes, absolutely. We can see that. Great. Um, so if I take the weights off of the force sensor, the LED turns off. Now, this is like the simplest example, and we're not actually turning on a motor or anything like that, but we are, uh, this is how you can begin to interact with your environment using the Arduino. You could think of it as a feedback loop where you're, maybe you're controlling a motor that's feeding sand into the bucket or something along those lines. At this point, really your imagination is uh, your limit as far as what you can do uh, to connect a small electronic devices to control uh, at that point. Um, so I have uh, another polling question at this point, and uh, I'm trying to remember what that question was. Uh, um, 
So, and, and I think I have a sense as to what the answer is going to be, but I'll just go ahead and pose the question anyway. So, if you were teaching coding with Arduino in your classroom, would you uh, introduce Arduino coding first? Or would you, if you were using the sensor activity, would you uh, introduce the concept of how sensors work first? Or would you give students a, a working model of both of them working together and just ask that they modify something? Maybe they input the slope and intercept or they, uh, or something along those lines. And I'll just give, I'll let you go from there. Okay, great. Thanks, Tom. Um, answers are coming in. Um, just quickly to flag up, also maybe to keep you in the back of um, in the back of your head for the Q and A at the end. Um, if there are any sort of examples for uh, maybe lower levels of sort of or lower ages, younger ages of students, um, maybe some scenarios that you could um, provide, sort of give an example of. Uh, I think there's quite a few participants here who are not necessarily that advanced and um, so yeah, any other examples that you have of using the sensors and the Arduino um, in maybe a less complex session uh, context would be probably helpful. But we can come back to, the, toward, to that at the end um, and we have answers still coming in now. So at the moment we have around 35% would introduce the concept of sensors first and then bring in the Arduino. Um, let's give it another 30 seconds. And I pose this question, uh, I guess, as much for, for you all as for me, uh, just to get, uh, get you thinking about how you might uh, approach this type of a lesson in your classrooms. Um, give you an opportunity to think about that a little bit. Okay, I'll close the poll now. Um, so if you still want to respond, please do so quickly. So the poll results should be showing up now very shortly. There we go. Can you see the poll results, Tom? Yeah, I can. Um, so uh, that's interesting. Um, it, it may be that if I had presented this webinar differently, some more people might have chosen to, uh, to look at the Arduino programming uh, first. Um, there is some, there are some great uh, tutorials that may be worth investigating if you're thinking about introducing Arduino into your classroom, about just getting the kids' hands on the Arduino and working with uh, the built-in LED that's there or firing up uh, some simple ac uh, activities that are uh, ready to go. Um, the uh, yeah, so let me just, uh, I'm going to skip this next slide and go right here to resources. So on the Arduino website, again, so you'll have access to this, there is the, uh, the Ar Arduino website itself as well as the uh, page where you can download the software, the free software, as well as the tutorials and the reference pages that I use quite a bit. Very helpful tools on Vernier's uh, website, uh, uh, information about our sensors, uh, information about uh, using our sensors with Arduino. Uh, we also have uh, details about our sensor pinout, which uh, if you're going to do this, you'll, be, you'll want to access that. Uh, again, a lot of information that's uh, readily accessible and free for your use. Um, I think that's all I have uh, prepared. Uh, I'll uh, just hang out here for questions that you may have. 
And uh, but before I just turn it over to you, the the name of the software that is a block style visual programming language is called Ardu Block. Maybe I'll just write that in the chat. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks a lot, Tom. So first yeah. of all, big thank you, Tom, for for the presentation and for giving us a a really nice introduction of how to use the census with your Arduino. Um, I think there's many people on the uh, on the webinar who really appreciated this. There are a couple of people, of course, if you work in a slightly different context or at a, are a beginner uh, in 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 using microcontrollers and coding, then um, there there are this. I mean. Some of the elements of the example were slightly more complex, but I would just say to all of you who have been slightly um, maybe uh, frustrated by this, really don't worry. I mean, I think this was just one example. Uh, as Tom mentioned, uh, there are easy ways using Arduino blocks of making this more visual and maybe more uh, relevant for beginning students um, using this. But I think this example was um, especially well suited for the higher ages of students as well as um, maybe some extracurricular activities. Um, <clears throat> now, let me come to a couple of questions that were posed as the presentation was going on. So, um, Anto Antonino Barrera asked um, if you know of a project that, in, that sort of um, highlights the digital skills that students acquire working with Arduino. Do you know of a specific project um, that sort of provides maybe some evidence of digital skills being acquired by the students when working with Arduino and the sensors, of course? I guess uh, so. Um, there's certainly a, a, a number of activities. Uh, I wonder if the if he's asking about a particular uh, like classroom project. Is that? I guess I'm trying to interpret his question a little bit there. So. Um, it, it, do you know maybe of any research or any any study that's been done? Um, where Arduinos and sensors have been put to use and how that has impacted the students' experience in the classroom? I am not uh, personally familiar with, uh, with a, a study along those lines. Um, and my experience has been, frankly, that uh, uh, teachers are uh, integrating Arduino uh, more on an after school or or uh, a group of, a class that is uh, focused on technology rather than mainstream okay and and what about i mean uh, another user was asking about making sort of this process of using the Arduino more engaging for students um, this is uh, Agaliki Nicolau asked or mentioned that the students really like working with the Lego Mindstorms, um, but were less patient with the uh, Arduino. Um, do you have any good strategies in mind how you can really engage students? So I think the the process that I've seen that works really well with students of all ages and with teachers, in fact, is to give them a a working sketch that has uh, even as simple as turning on an LED like we did today. And just have them uh, explore the sketch and figure out what they can do to change something about it. Maybe change the, uh, the level at which it triggers or uh, something like that. If they start with something that works to begin with, they're gonna be less frustrated with it and they can figure out how to modify it and start to get some context as to oh this is a uh, this is an equation here and I can just change this value and it changes something in my program. Okay, excellent. Um, what about maybe some scenarios of cross-curricular teaching using this using the sensors using the Arduino? Um, do you have an example, a project um, maybe that you're aware of where this was done very effectively? I, you know, I'm, I was thinking about that with the, the earlier question about uh, including this in kind of a language arts. Um, I know a lot of people use Arduino as uh, art projects. So they, in fact, this is, that was the, the genesis of Arduino was, it was a, an easily accessible device that anybody could go and, uh, and program so that an artist could 
make their their art interactive in some way. So maybe when a person comes close to their art, a light shines on it or something like that. Um, so there there are definitely opportunities for uh, for collaboration and and uh, working across uh, a different curriculum. Um, we had some teachers in this summer learning about Arduino, and and one of them uh, was an art teacher, and he was he was very excited about creating a, a display uh, that was more interactive uh, for his uh, for his art students to be engaged in. So that would be the thing that pops to mind. Okay, excellent. Thanks a lot. Any more questions coming? Um, if anybody has any more questions, please post them into the chat. Um, there was one question which I didn't quite understand. Um, it, this asked about if digital inputs are possible too. Um, Tom, do you have an idea what that could refer to? Yeah, because we're talking about our sensors uh, as an analog input um, versus the digital. So the digital would be kind of a discrete on or off signal like a photo gate or a motion detector would give us a digital signal. It's just saying, okay, it's on or it's off. And yes, we, we have examples on our website of, of using uh, those two sensors in particular, but g generically uh, digital inputs as well as the analog inputs. So that is possible. That's possible. Okay. Excellent. Great. Um, if anybody still has any other questions, please post them into the chat now. Um, otherwise, um, we are now in the full hour. So um, thanks a lot, Tom, um, for the presentation and for the demonstration as well. Um, if you um, if you can still share with us, um, and I'll share that directly on the course, uh, any extra links, um, the Ardu blocks you mentioned, I think you put, posted the link already into the chat. Is that correct? Somebody did. I see that. Yeah, yeah. somebody did. So. Um, so we'll collect all that and we'll add that to the recording of the webinar directly on the course. Um, so, yeah, so if there aren't any other questions, then um, thanks everybody for participating in the webinar tonight. And again, a special thanks to Tom for joining us um, with the presentation. Uh, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Okay, then all the best to the USA and I uh, hope you have a good day, Tom. Good day. <laughs>